man, this is the worst video store I've ever been to. What the fuck? Who are you? And how did you get into our treasure vault? Hey, uh... Hey, wait a minute, I recognize you. Aren't you somewhat famous Hollywood screenwriter Simon Barrett? Writer of such hit films as A Horrible Way to Die, The Guest, and You're Next? Yeah. I'm guessing I'm the first Hollywood screenwriter to grace this embarrassing room. Well, actually... Oh, hey, Simon Barrett, you wrote The Witch. I fucking love that movie. It's so visual and full of subtext. Probably the most haunting horror film I've ever seen. Oh, the Blair Witch. Well, Simon, you're here because you share our love of terrible, terrible movies. And uh, on the Plinketto board, we have some from your own personal collection. That's right, yeah. I, uh, in particular, I brought a VHS copy of 2020 Texas Gladiators, only to discover that you guys already have several. We already have that. Water stripping on me. <laughs> oh yeah, we got a leak. And next up on the board, we have Nightmare Weekend, starring not Elvira. And then uh, The Grave Digger, I believe that film is Spanish. All right, uh, next up we have The Pit, a uh, Canadian movie shot in Wisconsin. And then uh, Twin Dragon Encounter, that's that's one of yours. It looks action-packed. It's It keeps showing up on the board. We haven't landed on it yet. Looks like it is double the excitement of most films. <laughs> uh, and then next up we have Unmasking the Idol, which is the further adventures of Duncan Jacks. Rocktober Blood, uh, I've, I've heard of that one. Uh, but I'm not sure why. I think it had a controversial Blu-ray release. Yes, they said it was going to be a whole new transfer, and then it was just a VHS rip. Yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm a secretly a member of a few Facebook groups that got really angry about that for like <laughs> several years. <laughs> uh, and then next we have the prerequisite Deathstalker 3. Yep. That'll be on the board until we land on it, and then we'll move on to Deathstalker 4. Uh, Death Train. Uh, I don't know anything about this one. Is this? This is just a movie that we have. Got it. And then Man Killers, that's a David Pryor one, director of Deadly Prey uh, and Deadlier Prey. Um, killer Workout. Killer Workout, also featured on this show, so I brought that one thinking that, you know, can't go wrong with David Pryor. Yes. And then lastly, Roller Gator. It's, it's Roller Gator. I'm hoping for Roller Gator. Starring Joe Estevez, mark of quality. But I guess we'll pick this one up because we really need to showcase the artwork on the back here. It makes you really intrigued to see the film. Meet a rapping purple baby alligator fighting to escape the clutches of a scheming carnival owner who sends a skateboarding ninja to capture him. It's Roller Gator. <laughs> I'm gonna drop the ball. All right, come on Roller Gator. All right, this is our first drop. This will determine our mood for the rest of the day. Rocktober Blood. Rocktober Blood. Another rock and roll horror movie. Can't go wrong with those. You can't. <laughs> oh, the, now I like the little the copyright. new copyright. The new copyright. Seamless. <laughs> wow, great new transfer. <laughs> Those reds really just blur. <laughs> Billy I. Harper, legendary rock superstar, is dead and buried, but not forgotten. His music lives on. His lover and lead singer has taken over the band. Now they're out on the road and ready for the ultimate performance, but there is one problem. Billy is back from the grave and he wants to put a stop to the music the bloody way that Billy knows best. Oh, yeah. I guess you found her. Oh. oh. <laughs> he's just right oh, there. I guess he's the killer. Yeah. <laughs> Why aren't you singing Rainbow Eyes? What? I wrote that song for you. Rainbow Eyes or Rainbow Lies? Well, I you sing it. You're crazy, Billy. Mary if they're dead, you want So this guy went crazy, like, really quick. Yeah, this feels like the end of the film. <laughs> I know. <laughs> 
It was me. Oh my oh. god! What a twist. <laughs> So he was violent before he was a zombie or whatever he is? Yeah, it says the bloody way that Billy knows best, so I guess. They just really wanted all those bees. They wanted the alliteration. A killer show with all the elements. Die Hard fans, screaming guitars, blood red lights, and murder. Die Hard fans? Like the Bruce Willis movie? I don't really know that people consider murder like a really important part of the concert experience. But... <laughs> Well, but, this, but, but heavy metal horror movies tend to be very entertaining. Mm -hmm. Black Roses, Trick or Treat. We've done Trick or Treat on the show, yeah. hack -a lantern hack -a lantern is one of my personal favorites, so. not just from Best of the Worst, but in, in general. I think this is a contender. All right, let's do it. Oh, well, we got another lady to kill. I wonder if we're gonna get that same stomach close up. Oh no! Oh, oh, oh my hey. god! He cut her head off with that tiny knife! Yay! <laughs> That's a not a lady in a garbage bag. That's fine. <laughs> That's totally fine. That was fantastic. That was like a butter knife. So, Simon. Um, a good friend from California. Uh, people might not know this. You and I actually met at a Star Trek convention early on. We were both uh, cosplaying as our favorite Captain Janeway. I'm gonna go drop the ball now. All right, come All right. on, come on, roller gator. R O L L E R Gator. That one. The pit. The pit. The pit. I saw a little goblin. We, I, I landed on the pit. What's the pit about? Do you, do you know the pit? No, I mean, I, I'm hoping this one might actually be good. Uh, what's the tagline? Jamie wouldn't kill anyone unless Teddy told him to. That well, sounds bone chilling. That is, I mean, that art is the stuff of nightmares. <laughs> no one else in the whole world knows about them but you. Except you. You know about them now. <laughs> that is creepy. Bye! <laughs> no, I mean, so far this is pretty yeah, interesting. This is, it's weird. It's yeah. weird, yeah. 12-year-old Jamie, Sammy Snyders, Tom Sawyer of TV's Huckleberry Finn and his friends is one creepy kid. I mean, that's just not nice. Uh, I mean, this is his poor little Maybe kid. He has like problems. So. Right? He's a child actor. He's already has problems. He has a perverse obsession with sex. His only friend is an evil teddy bear, and he's the only one who knows about the hole in the forest where he feeds raw meat to a ravenous pack of mutant troglodytes. This sounds like a winner. I feel like the whole first part of that sentence didn't matter. I was right about that, Miss Oliphant. But like my father says, we all have to go sometime. <laughs> I resume out. <laughs> Jamie will teach everyone a lesson. The kids who teased and bullied him, the mean old lady down the street, even his pretty new babysitter. Soon, they, and his entire town, will face the flesh-eating horror of the pit. Sounds great. Let's, let's drop ourselves into the pit. The pit. <laughs> Oh no, it's a Don Doler movie now. Yay! Some type of animals, and they're killers. If any of you are in danger, kill them. Don't wait to ask questions. <laughs> they filmed in Wisconsin, you say? <laughs> Shoot the damn things. 
So Simon, as you know, I have earned enough points in previous episodes of Plinketto that I have chosen to use my free bonus to put the player's choice marker on the two empty spaces. Excellent, yeah. We'll see how many points I earn this round. I'm going to go drop the ball now. Oh, you, oh my God, that's right. <laughs> I'll, I'll go drop the ball. I, I forgot the complicated rules for a second. <laughs> But my use of the bonus player's choice invalidated my ball drop. Ah! All right, here goes. Aiming for Roller Gator. Good luck. Oh! Oh, no, no, you know what? I'm okay with Man Killer. I'm okay with that. Giving us a lot to latch on to right away here. Pretty uh, killer score so far. So we got that going. Yeah. Uh. All right, so you have landed on man killers, which it looks fun, but it's only worth 25 points. Would, would you like to read the back of the box? Uh, well, first of all, they're beautiful, they're deadly, they're on a rampage, no man can stop them. Uh, a female homage to the Dirty Dozen, Mankillers features a ragtag group of bottom feeders, murderers, thieves, and other assorted miscreants, who, unless they coalesce into a, into a lean, mean fighting machine to stop a rogue agent and the drug cartel that employs him, have the option of a prison cell or the electric chair. It's wall-to-wall -wall action and adventure in Mankillers. It's actually fairly wordy. It's a prison shower scene. Yay, tiny shorts! <laughs> Everyone gets tiny shorts! This... <laughs> Look at that! David Pryor, you dirty old man. <laughs> Directed and written by David A. Pryor, Deadly Prey, Killer Workout. Main Killer stars Ed Byrne, Byrnes, TV's 77 Sunset Strip, Gail Fisher, TV's Mannix, Edie Williams, The Naked Kiss, Linda Alden, Dr. Detroit, William Zip, Deadly Prey, and Chris Christine Lund, The Mask of the Red Death, and Suzanne Tegman, Death Chase. All-star lineup. I don't know much about firearms, but you, you don't hold it up well, when, when you're like searching for a target. Ideally, yes. you don't keep that, your finger on the trigger like that either. That, <laughs> that kills like two seconds of having to lower it. But it looks cooler. It looks cooler. Okay. okay, all right. Yeah, look, I mean, look how awesome that looks. Yeah. making these things do that <laughs> like there's no one there they're just on like string right just... yep. <laughs> 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 yeah. uh, disclaimer Mancos is presented using the best available elements provided by Slasher Video. Not sourced from an HD master, remastered from PAL, Beta, SP, and upconverted to Blu-ray and DVD specifications. Uh, okay. Go grab Rolex. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. A fluke, a fluke of physics has occurred. A, 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 a ro roller gator with Joe Estevez and Conrad Brooks. Meet a rapping purple baby alligator fighting to escape the clutches of a scheming carnival owner who sends a skateboarding ninja to capture him. <laughs> so what the hell are we gonna do now? Yeah, what about it? I don't know, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. And I'm thinking. Fucking, who was in charge of their yeah. shirts? Cause I love it. <laughs> <laughs> the detail put into each of them having a specific and unique tattered shirt. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. That's really true. <laughs> Look at that. And, and it's like designed for each of their like style. Yeah. 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 Someone spent a lot of time, David Pryor spent a <laughs> lot of time on that. Well, uh, everyone. I was waiting. Gentlemen, uh, on this very special 
special edition of Best of the Worst, special guest star, Simon Barrett. We, are, we, we randomly selected three terrible films from a random selection of 11 terrible films, mm -hmm. and then we watched them. From start to finish. From start to finish, and, and now we will discuss how terrible they are. I'm glad that you're explaining the format to people. We've only, we've only done a couple episodes. People haven't gotten it yet. Our first film <laughs> by Ferd and Beverly Sebastian, a.k.a. con artist couple. <laughs> uh, elderly, el uh, elderly lady yeah. named Beverly Sebastian made, made a film called Rocktober Blood. Ferd, which is a name I've never heard before. I think it's you short for Ferdinand. It oh, sure. I'm going to guess that, but... But Ferd and Beverly, who I, I, I don't think were elderly when they made Rocktober Blood, they eventually became elderly, yes. Yes. as most it's, people It's very do. common, yeah. yeah. Um, they made Rocktober Blood, and this is a film. Uh, Simon, you brought it with? Nope. Oh. <laughs> we, we had this? We had this. Uh, I don't know. Well, then I'll start left to right, Jay. Tell us all about Rocktober Blood. Uh, Rocktober Blood is a movie about... Look, it has a young Han Solo. <laughs> Uh, Rock Sober Blood is a movie about a woman that takes a bath. Several baths. Several baths um, over... Uh, in a hot tub. Well, first time is in a hot tub. Second time, she's in a bathtub. It was going to be in the hot it tub. It was going to be in the hot tub, and then she changed her mind. She would, uh, you know, she went to her room. She was already wearing a swimsuit. She changed out of her swimsuit and put on a towel and then went downstairs to where the... Uh, <laughs> I feel like I can summarize this film better than Jay. <laughs> <laughs> Jay, Jay, oh, oh, I'm going to take a crack at it. The, the, oh, the uh, writer is going to take Jay. control of talking about the, <clears throat> the stories. <laughs> Simon will talk about this. This is about a creepy a, sex a, a pervert, creepy sex pervert, which you're more, more akin to talking I understand. about. So I Simon, understand. tell us all about Rocktober Blood. Unbeknownst to the viewer, Rocktober Blood is a film about twin brothers, one of whom writes music. Spoilers! Uh, wait. Aren't we allowed to do that? <laughs> no, no one is going to watch Rocktober Blood. I don't know how to. I don't know how to describe the punt without reverse engineering it. That's that's fine. Just start okay. at the end and work your so, way back. So, so unbeknownst to the viewer, for the entirety of the film, almost uh, Rocktober Blood is about twin brothers, one of whom writes music that is stolen by his other brother, Billy I, a famous rock musician who uh, we believe murders a bunch of people and is executed after his ex-girlfriend and musical peer uh, fingers him for the crime. Now, everybody knows that you're the one who fingered Billy Iyer. If it wasn't for you, he probably would have never been executed. How does it feel performing his show with his band, this rock and roll spectacular of death? And then he starts showing up again, and we're like, is she crazy? Is she the killer? Is he back from the dead? Is he undead? Is he, was he not ever really dead? Did they like, not set the electrical chair high enough? None of these ideas were stupid enough. They weren't stupid enough. Uh, it, it, he has an un, previously unmentioned and unknown twin brother, we don't know what he's been doing, who is mad about everything uh, and is killing everyone and wants to take the stage himself. You jerk. I hope you catch every disease known to man. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good line. Yeah. You catch it too. I hate oh. you so much. I hope you get some kind of brand new disease that affects your autoimmune system. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. You're talking about AIDS, aren't you? I think, I think the important thing to point out about the movie, because I don't, know, I don't know if the discussion or the clips are going to make this clear, the movie does not make any of this straightforward. No, no it's, it's a very hard film to synopsize, to Jay's credit. Um, it, it, it really well, is. Well, in my, to be fair to myself, most of the movie is about a woman taking a bath. The movie makes it clear this is how a bath is taken. Yeah. You shampoo your hair. <laughs> you ha If you shampoo your hair, you have to rinse the shampoo out. Well, I remember the lead actor, his name was Trey Lauren. Yeah. And either this is a horrific typo, but the, the, it has him listed as Trey. Trey, <laughs> Tra Tra that's Tra his Tra rapper Tra name. <laughs> wow. Uh, I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a pretty, <laughs> pretty bad typo. It must have been someone playing a joke. It was him. He was dressed like death. Death? You mean Frankie? Yeah. It was Billy. 
Hey, come on, stop it. You know damn well he goes out. People don't come back from the dead. <laughs> I guess that scene's done. It's, yeah. We don't know what else to do. Cut. So we are told by characters that he killed a bunch of people and was executed, and his female colleague, who is our protagonist, Pat um, who he semi-stabbed and cut a few times but didn't murder because of security guard. Cut below her boob, right? He was go it felt like he was going to cut her breast off, but then he got uh, distracted by a cowardly security guard, <laughs> and, they, and they ran off screen. He, he forgot all about his main target to chase after the security guard. They ran guard. off the screen kind of Tom and Jerry style. Yeah. Come here, you little fucker. Oh, he's, <laughs> someone's looking at somewhere. Oh, so they are in the same kit. <laughs> oh. What a Whoa. great security guard. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where I was like, oh, what's gonna happen with this? And then, oh, two years later. Cut to two years later. <laughs> and, and, and we are informed that he's dead and she's now coming out of seclusion. She's gotten over her trauma and she's going to perform uh, a song that he wrote, uh, Rainbow Eyes, which we hear approximately 17 times. Uh, in its entirety, every single time. Uh, and this sounds exactly as riveting as it is in the <laughs> film. Like, uh, so, you know, B-roll, second unit stuff, really important. Uh, but some, some actual footage would be nice. It's kind of a whodunit at first. And, yes. and and the for, for five well seconds. for like a second the first the first chunk is is Pat Benatar crazy yeah. is she is she imagining that Billy has come back to life she's the only one who ever sees him yes. like like normally in a film like this you'd have a kind of giallo type thing where like you see the feet and you see a murder but you don't see the person's face it cuts we immediately establish to a mask his, yes and we're like oh the killer's gonna be in this mask the whole time immediately takes the mask off and it's Billy and it's know. definitely him yeah. But he nobody said, else said, saw him. Nobody else saw him but Pat Benatar. So maybe Pat Benatar's crazy. Yep. Our, our two options were Pat Benatar is crazy or there's a ghost. Who else has seen Billy besides you, huh? No one. Are you trying to tell me I'm nuts or something? No, I don't think you're nuts. You signed the paychecks. He's alive and I won't believe he's dead till I see his body. I want it dug up. You talk about this. Well, no. fair enough. We have to go dig up his body. Oh, yeah. uh, and, and to which her friends are like, okay. <laughs> oh, body! Oh, body! What? Oh. oh. <laughs> okay. He's away! He's away! Man, pull yourself together. He's dead. Come on. Man. But is he in there? He's dead. What do you look? I don't know if any of us were, any of us were right. Okay. Oh, he's just a perfect white skeleton with a headband. With a headband. <laughs> and one large worm on his face. That was fucking awesome. So they, yeah, they all show up and they dig up this thing and we get a cheap jump scare where he's in the grave, he's in the coffin. Um, but then we cut to reality. But that is her being crazy. But that's her. That's actually her being crazy, yeah. which confuses things even more. Well, it but, does, because that was just more evidence for that she's hallucinating. Yes, but then we cut to the reality, which is he's dead and he's a spooky Halloween store skeleton. It still had eyes, too, didn't it? <laughs> I don't uh, think it had it did, eyes. It, no, I think it did have eyes. Oh, God. The flesh had rotted off completely to the, where the bone was bleached white, but it still had <laughs> eyes. It had eyes. It had eyes, for sure. And it was wearing a red bandana. A, 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 a movie like this becomes very hard to talk about just because it's so poorly constructed. And it's hard to it's hard to, to bring you through a narrative when when at the time we were watching it we didn't even know what the fuck was happening <laughs> or why things were happening. Oh, he's gonna change into a character on the stage. Oh yeah, that is him, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely him. Oh my god! I see. So his he took off his wig to reveal kind of similar hair. <laughs> she sees Billy and has a mental breakdown, and Tom Petty says, you have to go to my house in Lake Tahoe and just relax for 50% of I the was, film. No, I was terrified when and that happened. Bring your two friends and we have a speedboat. Yep. <laughs> I, I was absolutely terrified when that happened because I'm like, oh no, woods. Because when you see woods in a low budget movie, you know, usually, people are just gonna be walking around. Usually that means that you're gonna spend 90% of your movie <laughs> Oh, 
I don't know, now we're not gonna see a whole thing for the rest of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> she took a photo of a squirrel. She did. she did some hiking, light hiking. She got in the speedboat, went in a circle, came back. <laughs> well, well, this film, which was made in 1984, uh, feels like it was trying to take advantage of two trends, obviously the slasher trend, and also the satanic panic, kind of heavy metal horror trend, exemplified by films like Rock and Roll Nightmare, Black Roses, Trick or Treat. Was there a bath trend? Uh, and also, and also, <laughs> Peter Greenaway's Twenty Seven Bathrooms. Baths uh, have always been popular. <laughs> well, I would say the the movie picks up at the end because the whole movie is yes. just sort of like filler. That's why like, we keep talking about the the bathtub scene because it just goes on and on. It, it feels padded um, for length. It feels padded, and then you get to the end, and it's the big concert. Die. But first, we're gonna put on a show that you don't ever forget. Ultimate Rocktober blood and gore show. The one that I wrote. And then he drugs her with a bottle conspicuously named, labeled Ether yeah. and puts her in a coffin, goes on stage, performs. Uh, I performs guess. to people that were there to see her oh. perform. Right. So they're like, nobody is wondering who this guy is. And he's using a sword mic stand to stab <laughs> the back, the back, uh, back ground dancers, backup dancers. And none um, of the other musicians seem to care about this. Yeah, yeah they're just playing their songs. Not just stab, disembowel, and <laughs> yeah. decapitate. Decapitate. He's going off script by murdering the backup dancers, but they're like, better go with it. Don't want to rock the boat. Oh, oh my god. He stabbed her on stage, but they all think it's like a guar bit. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a woman in the background with one breast out, um, which feels like just maybe a mistake. Um, and and then well, that becomes a theme too. Then um, so so the, but the but the climax of Rocktober Blood is actually like like borderline fairly entertaining. I oh thought. yeah, like, it, like it finally picked up. He handcuffs her to himself so and, and is singing the song and dragging her around on stage, which she does very, she just very confusedly follows him for this entire scene. And and like her, her you know, kind of roadie Tom Petty assistant is like, I would love to electrocute this villain with an electric guitar, but I can't because they're close to each other. We gotta wait for the right yeah. moment. So we keep right. cutting to them like, uh, uh. But I mean, they could have just walked up to him at any time and just punched him in the nose because <laughs> he's because he's not doing. He's not. She's not. She's not in any jeopardy. He's just yeah. singing. He's just, just singing a song. Why do you think if you hit someone over the head with an electric guitar, it will electrocute them? Because it's not Jay. Because it's an electric guitar. Oh, we don't even see him die. We do. We see him. I think that's well, like his last moment of life when we yeah. freeze. But we don't. We don't see it because he's in right. mid. He's in mid death. No, no, no. They hit him with the guitar. <laughs> the electric uh, electrical jolt is so powerful that it shatters her handcuff. Yes. <laughs> she escapes. He continues to bleed from his eyes and his face yeah. while singing, and then it freeze frames <laughs> mid singing, and then the credits come up. So Rich is right. He might actually just be fine. Just like he a little be, scalded. He continued to sing after being electrocuted. Well, we'll find out in Rocktober Blood Two. Well, so so Rocktober Blood Two was crowdfunded. The point is, the sequel was entitled Rocktober Blood to Billy's Back. Billy's the one that was wrongly executed. And by, and by sequel, I mean crowdfunding campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, they did a crowdfunding campaign where, where if you donated $50 uh, with plus $10 shipping, you would get a DVD or Blu-ray of this, Rocktober this, Blood. This very Blu-ray. A brand new DVD. HD transfer, uh, supposedly from 35 millimeter oh, elements. You get a Blu-ray, Jay. Uh, people got their Blu-rays, and it was this transfer that we all got to enjoy tonight. <laughs> and they were understandably confused. And uh, it, it and it was suggested uh, many times on many forums that what had happened was they were actually running a barbecue restaurant in Florida, <laughs> and they just used the money to open this barbecue restaurant. Uh, <laughs> this is all allegedly. This is all allegedly. Yes, like like we we are. We don't want to imply fraud. We're only saying. We just want to demonstrate it. <laughs> we're just talking about extreme fraud, <laughs> but criminal fraud we're just talking about. We're just talking about it. It's, just, it's like we're saying what we've heard, Yeah. like from us, from, from each other. Yeah. From hearsay. Right now. Um, and 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 this this DVD, uh, the film comes to an end. Yeah, we, and don't, we it, don't have special features listed. We just have. And then something truly magical occurred. <laughs> What has Beverly been doing for the past 25 years? She's been rescuing greyhounds. 
The film ends and it cuts to an elderly furred Sebastian. And he is like, you want to know what we've been up to for the last 25 years? And you, are, you the viewer, are like, no, I wasn't wondering that. <laughs> I, I wanted to know. I, I just I, want I, an I, HD transfer of Rock Total or I'm, Or I'm maybe curious about the making of this uh, inexplicable film. Sure. Uh, so the simple narrative is that uh, Beverly Sebastian began running a Greyhound Rescue, uh, which uh, for whatever reason was the target of a boycott, and people came and took her Greyhounds because she couldn't maybe keep them all in one room. Well, when I did this rescue, it was one time I couldn't do everything, I discovered that. And one night when I thought the whole world was against me and I had all these dogs, I didn't know what to do with them. That makes you wonder, right? I mean, this is a, a fucking Greyhound rescue operation that was going to get boycotted. Yes. What the fuck happened? <laughs> when your Greyhound Rescue is being boycotted. <laughs> this is this is a explanatory special features element segment that definitely raises more questions than it provides answers. It was late that afternoon when somebody asked me, well, what happened to that group that was supposed to come by and boycott you? And I started laughing. I said, well, Jesus answered my prayer. Uh, so we don't know what happened, but then she starts a charity, uh, which the entire segment is just basically shilling for this charity, which may or may not be uh, a wonderful, positive charity. Let's. let's they need to open up a new barbecue restaurant. <laughs> oh God, is oh, that wait. where the greyhounds went? <laughs> 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 These ribs taste awfully weird. <laughs> <laughs> and you just like see like them like chasing the dog. Like, like, they're, like, <laughs> they're like they're like I thought this food you said it would be coming out quickly. They're like no 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 it came from something that was very fast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. They do have a lot of web addresses like constantly. Oh, www comma to, comma, to yeah. Jesus dot org. Yes. Oh oh yeah comma there's a comma. In whoever there. whoever is typing up. Things for this DVD. Is, I think it was Billy from Fern. Beyond the Grave. Well, I went to Fern's the. Fern's heart condition is, is causing so many typos. I started having problems with my heart. I went to a doctor there and he told me I had one week to live. They'd try an operation, but I'd probably die on the operating table. But. And on the face of it, when you say, like, oh, it's, you know, it's a scam to promote their dog rescue, that doesn't sound. Immoral. You're like, oh, that's great, but but it but it calls the dog rescue into question. Yes, it, yes. it calls the sincerity of everything into question when you're selling sixty dollar copies of October Blood that look like the thing we just saw, yeah. and uh, supposedly to raise money for a sequel, which if there's any evidence of it going into production, uh, we could not find it on the <laughs> on the internet. And they're also in their 80s, and there's just no way they're making that fucking movie. <laughs> if you donated to this crowdfunding campaign, you are a fool. <laughs> I want your hot, steaming pussy blood. Oh, God! <laughs> well, as promised, the film about a young sex pervert creepily spying on ladies at the shower figured rich. Bait and switch. <laughs> Bait and switch, check, got it. <laughs> Ding! Ding! Jay, tell us all about The Pit. Uh, the Pit is the most bizarre contemporary reimagining of Dennis the Menace I've ever seen. <laughs> Jay, that was perfect. Thank you, thank you. I was thinking about that during the movie. I was like, you know, this little kid, this little creepy sex pervert, he reminds me of Dennis the Menace. And you saved that for the table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wil Mrs. Mrs. Wilson Mrs. into Wilson. the pit. Like several miles. <laughs> several miles, yeah. It's yeah. a bit of a, a trek on her motorized wheelchair. Yeah. Uh, the pit is, it's kind of like a couple disparate things going on, which is one little 12 year old kid is a creepy sex pervert. I was just watching you sleep. <sighs> he uh, is very interested in, in ladies, particularly his uh, librarian and his uh, babysitter, uh, but he's becoming a little pervert. They share similarities with David Pryor. Young David Pryor? Yeah, young David Pryor. Yeah, oh, this, this, this is the, the young adventures of David Pryor. An old David Pryor, I guess. Well, I see, David know. Pryor, if he'd wandered in to watch his babysitter sleep and her breasts were exposed, would have 
covered it up. But just, oh, yeah. Yeah. Just like. Dave, David Pryor, all of his movies, all the ladies. There's gently no placed the machine gun in her hands. Yes. <laughs> exactly. He also has a bear, a teddy bear, that talks to him. I bet Abigail was surprised. Look at the look in her face. I'm going to look at these a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and then kind of unrelated he finds a big pit in the middle of the woods that has these little creatures in it but but the interesting thing is that the teddy bear and the monsters appear unrelated well they are unrelated, they are unrelated. um the the teddy bear talks to him and it's just his own voice and it's like it's it's kind of psychological and we discovered we we did a little research and i guess the original script for this movie it was the pit was always supposed to be, it was psychological. It was not a literal pit with literal monsters in it. That was in his head. That was in his head, and it was sort of uh, uh, kind of a metaphor for his uh, budding interest in sex and interest in women. Don't you ever get lonely always playing by yourself? Well, I'm not lonely. I got Teddy. And the things in my terrarium. Do, do you fuck Teddy? <laughs> Is that why his fur is all matted and weird? <laughs> <laughs> um, but in the movie, the final version of the movie, there's actual creatures in there, little hairy critter monsters. Um, and then the movie kind of peters out towards the end when they get out and they just kill people and it turns into a generic monster movie. Um, but 95% of the movie is weird and interesting. And then there is the kind of, like, possible supernatural teddy bear thing, which really isn't very fully explored. Its but. head turns on its own once. Yeah, I wanted to only, mention that. Yeah. Ah! I knew it! Ah! <laughs> I knew it! One shot, it's very obvious that he's, it's his own voice. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's not like a demon voice, like, eh, you know. It's his own voice, which is very clearly psychological. Yeah. But then they have that one shot where the head turns. And then it's like, oh my God, it's possessed by the demons. Oh, no. Yeah. No. <laughs> one shot. <laughs> Just oh. the one shot. No, it feels like they were originally going for, um, it reminded me of another Canadian film, Pin, uh, with Terry Oh, with Pin is Quinn, great, yeah. Where, where when Pin speaks, it's always with Terry O'Quinn's kind of whispering voice. Mm -hmm. Um, and 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 you realize, you know, you, you, it lets you know that it's not real in, in certain subtle ways. This, however, makes it unambiguously clear that the pit is real. You crummy little rat! You give me my bike! My aunt will call the police on you! There's a pit there! <laughs> you don't see the fucking pit! There's a pit! I don't think so. He kind of got this, lucky with that one. There's a gigantic pit directly in front of you. In the troglodytes are these like little kind of um, like critters looking things, like critters from the film Critters. Mm -hmm. uh, the red eyes. Yeah, they've got little glowing eyes and they're kind of... Same kind of fur. Sharp teeth they're, and they're kind of cute. Well, the structure of the movie is a little weird. I think they changed it in editing because we start with yes. a, a flash forward that has a flashback in it. <laughs> that, that kind of ruins the slow build, him yeah. kill, it does, actually killing. But it does, but it really feels like, oh, we gotta put something up front. Right. Yeah. It, it they does. didn't need to. It would've no. been interesting. It, no, it would've been like such a great, like slow escalation, because it's like, the kid, like, the the uh, uh, the babysitter is like, what do they eat, chocolate bars? She's like humoring him. And so he throws like candy bars down there and they don't care about that. And so he starts buying meat from the butcher shop. <laughs> he, he, sees a, he gets a book in the library and he reads about animals. And, yeah. Oh, carnivores, yeah, they yeah. eat meat. It was yeah. very little, little shop of horrors. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Audrey, too. Yeah, he has to steal money to get more meat from the butchers. And, and then at one point he just tries to steal meat from the back of the butcher truck. Tries to convince a cow to go into the pit. <laughs> the, the cow won't go. Hey, he's stealing a whole cow now. But somebody's going to come and take you away and kill you. <gasps> Make steaks and hamburger out of you. <laughs> I've got some friends that eat meat too. And I gotta take care of them. I'm gonna take you to see them. <laughs> yes! Stealing a cow. This cow going in the pit. <laughs> Come on, cow. <laughs> right to the source. <laughs> the cow. I didn't want to hurt you anyways. 
He yeah. tried everything. Uh, give him credit. But in, 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 in a wonderful part of the film, it, you know, there is, is once it gets going, it, it goes quite quickly in that he feeds several people in a row yes. to the pit in, in increasingly kind of hilarious ways. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all of which play kind of like slapstick because he's killing people with a hole in the ground. So they either have to, well, they just have to either accidentally fall into it or he pushes them into it. Okay, so by the way, this boyfriend is the nicest guy, right? Yes. He's like, hey kid, you want to learn how to play football? Look, there's a clearing just up there. We can play there. Come on. There's most definitely not a pit right in front of you either. He's gonna go out for a little pass. Yeah, how's this guy gonna... You see? I told ya. Now go for a long one. Yep. Oh, yeah. I mean, a huge part of the film is just this kind of weird anxiety of having to deal with the responsibility of, of a pit. Mm -hmm. Like, like if you're the only person who knows a pit exists with little hungry troglodytes at the problem, like that's your pets, and you got to keep them okay, and like, and that's a responsibility. Yeah. But, but Rich brought up many, many good points. How did they exist for a hundred thousand years without this twelve-year-old? Once well, that, the that's... film becomes literal, it raises a lot of questions. Yeah, if you, if you look at it, uh... if it's psychological or fantastical, or he's imagining it, it makes sense. Or did, but... right. Or did they just fall into the pit? We see that a lot of people do. Five prehistoric troglodyte monsters. Oh, and then it's then suddenly it's four because he, he's like, I think one died. I think, uh, I think oh, one no. just died. I think one of them died. Yeah. So they maybe they just all f simultaneously fell in the pit and got trapped. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sixty minutes before the twelve-year-old found them. That's my feeling. That's, that's my. That's, that's my the opinion. logic I'm going with. That's the only thing that really makes sense. Oh yeah, that's the thing to point out. This is a what they call Canucksploitation film. It's a Canadian produced movie. They shot it in Beaverdam, Wisconsin, which is not too far from us. It's really a tragic film because yes, it could have gone like one way. She could have been like, this is a great discovery. Like people are gonna like you. And, and then she's like, whoops. And <laughs> like, well, I shouldn't have worn high heels. Like, and then her bloody ghost comes back to chide him. To chide him. Jamie, do you know what you've done? And then it takes a weird twist where it feels like someone came in and said, you need these monsters to come out of the pit and start attacking local teens as yeah. they skinny dip. That's where it turns into a Don Dolan <laughs> movie. Where, and then the local rednecks with shotguns hunt them down and then it's like, well, it's, it's a completely different type of film. Yeah. It's where I stopped becoming interested in the film. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like the last 15 minutes or so where yeah. it kind of loses you a bit. Uh, do, you, do you want to talk about the film's uh, plot twist ending or the twist at the end? Uh, oh, the very end? The very end. Oh, sure. I mean, because there is a twist uh, where he, he, for some, whatever reason, the film doesn't make it clear, he goes to live with his grandparents and he meets a adorable little moppet of a girl who lives next door and she's like, let's be friends, which is what he's wanted the entire film. And then she essentially takes him into the woods uh, and she has her own pit. <laughs> and she pushes him in the she pit. She pushes him into the pit. So the, called it. So, yeah. And Rich called Rich, it. Yeah. Rich, Rich called a lot of things, uh, <laughs> which makes me feel like he maybe made these films. We can play together, okay? Sure. Okay, you chase me. Yay! Everybody's happy. He's totally fallen into a pit. <laughs> now cut to credit. Uh, I truly have no idea where this film is headed. He's gonna fall and she's tricking him into a pit. But I like I like movies that I don't know where they're going. This is great. This it's totally going. She's tricking him to fall into a pit. Rich, you're right. Oh my god. Rich, Rich. Congratulations, Rich. I think that I think I might have liked that movie. But he, he kills five people and he, he sets up with the, the, the ballerina skirt, the tutu? The tutu. Yeah, what were the other frames? The photos! The, photo, oh, right. oh, God. the librarian who he that sets requires... up, that's part of the whole the, creepy yes. sex thing. That requires yes. so much explanation that, though. You need uh, to yes. talk about that before you mention those pictures. Okay. He, he prank calls the librarian and, and uses his own voice that's slightly echoed. On a, v, on a he, cassette he, Yeah, is it on a cassette tape? It's playing, yes. He so, apparently recorded it knowing exactly how she would respond yeah. and how long it would take her to respond. Yeah, yeah he's like, your, your, your niece, because she's the aunt, it turns out. Your niece has been kidnapped. I need to see you. Yes, I need like, you to expose your breasts 
to the right window, now. Yep. or your niece dies. And, and but he doesn't sound like a 12 year old on the phone. <laughs> she complies and he, he is able to snap Polaroids at the exact moment that she exposes her breasts. Yes. Yep. Uh, and then she she has that, the tutu, and one other piece of evidence that he, that he plants in premeditation to cover up his own crimes of murder. <laughs> okay, then, wise guy. Explain this being in your car. Ooh. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, man. And the Polaroids. Man, this kid's a genius. <laughs> this, is, this is like the, the, the prequel to the Joker. <laughs> He's a criminal mastermind. Well, the cops are too lazy to follow up the, the case. Well, the cops discover a pit full of troglodytes. Well, before that, though, it's like, eh, he probably didn't do it. <laughs> yeah, this, yeah, I mean, this movie is not a fun. I don't, I don't think he did it. Eh. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. The film does not portray Beaver Dam's police force as, like, especially competent. Like, it, it's really extraordinary. I mean, remember the slapstick bit in the wheelchair? That's what she is? Is she missing? Yes, sir. I don't believe it. How could anyone possibly be missing in this town? What the fuck was that? What we really needed here was some boobery. Slapstick. <laughs> oh, out of control wheelchair. Yeah. Humor. What? Uh -huh. Why did that happen? My, my issue with the pit personally, is that I, I think it's borderline a good movie. It's almost extra. Yeah, yeah. Well, I haven't seen extra, but I was going to say, have you seen The Reflecting Skin? Oh, I like that movie. I, yeah. I love that Of film. course. <laughs> of course. He says some weird shit, and you say, of course. That's the second one. You mentioned Pin, and you mentioned Reflecting Skin. The Reflecting Skin, skin is, is kind of like a darker take on the 400 Blows. It's just very, like, there's... Oh, I know true fall. <laughs> I mean, I'm not that bad, but but this guy and his weird crap. Pfft. Well, that's oh, yeah. that's what I was gonna say is that like it, the fact that there was some meddling and the fact that like the 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 kind of like metaphor gets muddled that actually makes the movie more interesting because it makes it weirder. Um, so it, yeah, the movie feels more unique because of the fact that it doesn't quite work. Well, I, you know, and that's the funny thing. We can we can we can kind of be nostalgic for this alternate version of this film that 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 seems better, where it's a where the pit is all in his head and he's just a crazy kid, uh, and we're seeing like the you know the process of a of a of a mentally ill child becoming a mentally ill teenager and and. But that movie might suck too. They might have like they might have made the right choice by just being like, nah, it's a pit. By turning it into a Don Dolor film. <laughs> Red, nice. Rednecks with guns running around the woods killing monsters. Yeah, yeah, it, and yeah, and, and like little guys and. If you're about to costumes. achieve brilliance, turn it into a Don Dolor film. <laughs> well, well, look, I mean, I I wrote the guest, so I think like like people might like like understand that I I, I do think like you know hey like like oh you thought we were going for something subtle. Oh, yeah, well, like... We're yeah. gonna hit you over the head with a sledgehammer! Yeah, exactly. Like, what if he goes into a Halloween maze? So, so I have an affinity for films that, like, become, like, extreme genre in their third act. Yeah. But, but, but this film really... It, it, it doesn't quite work. It, it really doesn't. And, and partially it's because the little Bigfoots are just, like, kind of cute. To, to, be, to be fair, to be fair, even if you didn't have the little Bigfoots running around, the, I guess that's what we're calling him The now. goofiness of the kills yeah. might have also killed that, him. That, yeah, that, that's a weird choice, too. Like the football death? Yeah. <laughs> or the little girl who just walks right into the pit when I she mean, would obviously see this giant pit? When he goes to the old woman in her wheelchair and is like, I'm going to take you for a walk. And she's like, well, I don't know. And then, like, it cut and he starts pushing her. The wide shot? And nope, then it yeah. cuts to the wide shot yes. of him pushing her, like, across a field. And she's it's a comedy like, shot. Yeah. Yes, I mean, it is, it is unambiguously, like, a goofy, goofy, goofy yeah. moment. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Well, if it isn't clumsy, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> what a clever nickname. Well, uh, Rich? Yeah, uh, this is, this is a fucking easy one. I just... Wait, what movie is he talking about? Man Killers. Talk about Man Killers. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about Man Killers. Oh, okay. uh, let's 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 get two dozen boobs and have them run around the woods with guns. Precisely two dozen breasts. There Jesus, you go. Jesus Christ, that's literally it. <laughs> that's, that's literally it. There is no nudity in their film. However, 
their depiction of the female form somehow goes past nudity. <laughs> it, 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 it somehow this is so much sleazier than a movie full some, of nudity. That's somehow, the one thing. That's the one thing that's interesting about this movie. Somehow yeah. they're able to be more exploitive in showing clothed women the, than well, anyone could possibly be in showing a nude woman. The craziest thing is that I I never ever thought about. Wait, are you saying this is worse than? Porno. <laughs> yes. Okay, I well, agree. Maybe not every porno. Yeah. Let's let's do the full proper synopsis just so we can get that out of the way. Sure. There there is a, a a drug dealer who was like a former federal agent or a cop, and he's he's turned bad and he turned bad with his female partner McKenna, who, who he shot and left for dead. McKenna. But McKenna and she survived. I'm guessing something bad is going to happen in this car. Because it looks like a piece of junk. Based is that car with no headlights? <laughs> that car is going to explode. <laughs> I don't know, you guys. I feel like that car might roll down a hill or something. He got these in a junkyard? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh I don't know, guys. <laughs> I'm feeling a little worried about these cars. They're in a couple beaten down cars on an empty road. <laughs> I don't think anything's going to happen. You used me. I let you talk me into this, and you used me. You bastard. You're breaking my heart, baby. I love you. Dumb bitch. Oh. What? It was a flashback. Neither of those cars blew up, and he went on to become a drug dealer and sex trafficker. Again, we are all in, we, this is a la Rocktober Blood, we're informed of this yeah. without seeing it. And because he's like a former, he was a former agent, he knows all the tricks, they, they can't catch him. They just can't catch him, and so out of desperation, they go to his former partner, who he turned on and shot, and they want McKenna to track this guy down. You're the best one for the job. You must really be desperate if you're willing to trust me again. And her plan is to get 12 girls together, and they're gonna run around in the woods with guns to shoot them. Twelve, to shoot all of them. Where does he get those 12 girls? Oh, from right. prison. Yeah. They're all prisoners. Now, They're all now, prisoners. Now, you would think from what Rich just said, it's like, oh, this person went to prison because she has a specialized talent. No. Well, that's that's the thing. You you expect the team of specialists. Like, here's my plan for infiltrating the base. We need a demolitions expert, and I need someone whose specialty. They were a thief. They're good at infiltration. They know how to sneak around. No. And and furthermore, because they're trafficking women, you think like, oh, they might infiltrate this. No. Yeah. No, they're just women who were in prison for similar vague manslaughter, manslaughter, a uh, con manslaughter. She just finds mm -hmm. crooks and they run towards the camp with guns. And, and that's and the movie. And the movie goes out of its way to inform you that the 12 prisoners she got, it's actually only 10, because with her and her partner, who's hastily kind of introduced and then non-introduced. Stormy Daniels. Stormy Daniels. Stormy Daniels. Uh, they, they, are, they make 12, which I think is what this film was trying. All the, all the Prior Brothers films have a reference point in popular cinema. And, and from talking to them, they said that they would basically go see a popular movie and then they would try to do their version of it, mm. which is why like Night Wars or whatever is Platoon meets Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, obviously Deadly Prey is kind of a, a Rambo 2 type thing. Here's, here's the thing though, that I am very disappointed in this movie. <laughs> This is the late <laughs> one. had high expectations. It, it is a little disappointing. I, I am. We. This is the man who made Deadly Prey. That was one of the best movies we ever screened. That's true. By still, far. Still, and that's been years now. It's yeah. still the best movie. It's an incredible film. Even his other movies, they weren't as good. They have uh, energy. But... He tried. Yeah. He, he, you could feel some effort. This is the laziest fucking yeah. thing that David Pryor has ever done. We really need to talk about the wardrobe in this film. Yes. Uh, which is, is first of all, I, and, and I almost feel, the movie implicates it, you, the viewer, in its own lustful lasciviousness. <laughs> because like when I say a phrase like, there is not a brassiere worn in this film, it makes me sound like, like a Why do they have to wear But But bra. you will know very quickly that no one in this film is wearing a bra. Uh, they are all wearing basically uh, torn rags, uh, barely covering their erect nipples. <laughs> and I just don't know how else to phrase that. And they jiggle and they bounce and you are just like, this is not appropriate army garb. No. I you're, you're crawling through rock. <laughs> you're firing like rifles. This is not safe. Was it, it, which it, was it, it you that said like when they're doing the? Oh, the, that, that, that yeah, was that was me. Yeah. yeah, that was me when they're crawling under the thing and they're wearing like the short yeah. shorts and just, and you can tell when they're getting up that their knees are just like wrecked. Yeah, you it's need, just like you, you should have just worn pants. Yeah. Pants would have been really helpful in that situation. But I mean, and there's some of them that are wearing shorts that are like scandalous. 
This like, this all sounds bordering like guys, on G, G I, string. I, I really, yeah. Well, here's the paradox. I, I really though. hoped when I went on Best of the Worst that we would not be having a conversation like the one we're having. <laughs> but it, but it is it is unavoidable. I think I think the problem is you guys seem to have a real big problem with what is essentially a feminist manifesto. I am uh, disgusted by any depictions of the female form. <laughs> And I, that is what's going on here. This, this movie is so, there, there's 12 strong women in this film and all you guys are doing they're is so talking strong. about the way they're dressed. They're so strong. And, and the and fact that they are, are scantily clad. You know, can I? And they're doing jumping jacks. It's, a, it's about tough women doing jumping jacks. Yeah. <laughs> but we're no all gonna bra. watch their tits bounce for hours. <laughs> no bras in the military. This is highly empowering. <laughs> <laughs> was that killer workout that had the montage of, yep. yeah. of like the- Endless montages endless of crotches. Yep. Right. yep, crotches everywhere. Yeah. That's what, oh, Okay. Yeah. Can you believe goes. that's the same filmmaker? Look the how far he's come with his progressive views. No. They're, they're women working out. They're just working out. They're training. Okay. It's that you're reading into it too. Much. <laughs> you're putting well, your I mean, male gaze. They're working oh. out. Yeah. There's a theme. Jay's right. And you guys are just. You're Ju pigs. Uh, jumping jacks without right. Can, we, can we show a clip pigs. of the one failing to throw a grenade? <laughs> <laughs> can we show a clip of the one that's running that falls out of her top? Like, At the end of this montage, their knees are just all bloody. Oh my god! god. She, she hey. popped out! Hey, hey, I thought you said there no nudity! Nudity and David Pryor well, accidental nudity. Well, I guess no nudity. intentional nudity. I and then they just left it in! And in Jay's right, I would like to do a self-crit right now. Uh, I, like, this was a very feminist film. These, these women, they absolutely do eventually, uh, after several of them who may or may not have had names, get murdered, and <laughs> after being sexually threatened and called bitches and bitches and bitches, um, they, they do eventually kill a man, and the movie ends not one second later. <laughs> like, so like, if you think the movie is gonna have a moment where they're like, "High five, we did it, girls! You're all, all your sentences are commuted. Like, we did it. We have a moment." Nope. Oh, as soon as the male character dies, yes, yes. credits roll. I mean, because that is the movie. The movie has served its function. Come on, girls. Let's go home. And, and we also should say, um, the climax of this film and much of this film takes place around just a bunch of uh, like corrugated aluminum sheds. Where, the, where our, our protagonist train is aluminum sheds. Where they go to fight the bad guys is aluminum sheds. If, if, you, if you have a aluminum shed fetish, <laughs> this film is your like cat like is, is that the cat. fetish you think this movie was going for? <laughs> that is so underwhelming. That's not where you put those. No. Three, four. Oh, oh. wait. Oh, oh the walls hey! just fall over. Hey! Oh god. There's our big action. Oh. This is like a stage production. This is like a, like a high school production. <laughs> yeah. The community theater. <laughs> <laughs> the most baffling part is when our hero, the main woman, McKenna, right? Well, that's that's the end. The, the last thirty-five minutes of this movie is just McKenna shooting a guy again, again and again and, and, again. and, and again. And then and they again. hide behind very thin pieces of aluminum and cardboard, and bullets ricochet off that, and then they shoot. Each then she shoots him again. To be fair, there's a whole lot of tension in that scene, though, because we don't know <laughs> when she's going to use the bazooka. She has a bazooka strapped over oh, her shoulder. You were, I, I was going in a different direction. Oh, there, yeah? There's a lot of suspense, because you just don't know when someone's going to fall out of their top. Like, like, like it, it could happen at any that's moment. That's the whole movie. Yeah. It, it, I was on the edge of my well, seat. Well, the, the bazooka and the confrontation with bad guy, uh, the, the tension is four feet to the right, <laughs> Are the the oh, yeah. ten other women who have machine guns are just waiting? Well, there's there's she, only she there's only She's there's like, only eight of them at that point. Yeah, okay. some of them died. Some of them died. We don't but, know which. But McKenna's like, I gotta deal with this on my own. You she, guys, she's stay like, back. yeah, she's like, this is my thing. And then literally, I mean, they're 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 five feet away. It's absurd. And and the movie then she blows him up at the end with the bazooka in a staggeringly anticlimactic and disappointing uh, moment. <laughs> 
Oh, oh no! Well, I can't see anything. <laughs> I wish I hadn't done that. All right, here we All go. Right. Uh, <laughs> what the fuck is he planning on doing? Come on, come on now. Ow! Oh. That's it. That's not how bazookas work. Oh. Uh, That's it. Oh. 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 oh fireworks went off. He <laughs> He's still alive. He's gonna get out of the car. He's gonna start hobbling. Oh wait! <laughs> Did he just have like fireworks in his pockets? I that think, was pathetic. Uh, I think they realized the explosion wasn't quite as exciting, so they did a couple more. Yeah. And then the smoke drifts away, and it and she walks over, and they're all just there. They're like, "Great job." It's it's this. It's missing a pan for full comedic effects. It, it, just it, it really whoop. is. Right. Yeah, or or just like a different angle yeah. where they're just in the background being like, go, go, good, he's right over there. It's funny, we began the night with a film about a woman taking a bath, and then we <laughs> moved on to a film about a kid who likes taking baths. We didn't even mention and, that. And we finished with a film that made us all want to take a bath. <laughs> ah, I brought it all around. Ah. We nice feel, little bow. We feel dirty, and and there's no way to talk about it without implicating yourself in its sins. I, I do uh, feel although dirty. Although it is a very, although it has certainly its own moral code. A uh, lot of questions about man killers, but they pretty much all answer themselves. Uh, it's a movie about women running around wearing very little. <laughs> it's it's basically Baywatch for like the Rambo crowd. Mm. Oh, yeah. oh, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I would say it's a female empowerment film about revenge. She gave us a chance when nobody else in this world would. A chance to be the best at what we do and use it for something that really matters. A chance to respect ourselves. That's the difference. Uh, we'll go last, Rich. Best of the worst. The Pit, by a mile. By a fucking mile. Pitt's one of the most interesting screenings I've had on Best of the Worst. Interesting or most entertaining. The rules are most entertaining. For any reason, and that's the pit. Yeah. Fine. <laughs> Simon? Well, I agree with Rich. Uh, and, and what I would say in response to the most entertaining uh, qualification is I never knew what this film was going to do next. I truly didn't know. And, and that to me is kind of the definition of entertaining. It's like, it's like a, when a movie can surprise me and continue to surprise me, as long as it's not just doing goddamn stupid nonsense. And, but this is really a unique thing and, and, and it has many good ingredients and I think it's unambiguously the best of the worst. All right, Jay? Uh, the Pit, it's, 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 it's weird and interesting. It's, it's up there with Extro, which was one of our very first best of the worst episodes. But as far as movies that are like really, really interesting, I think The Pit, it keeps you guessing. If it didn't fall apart in the final 15 minutes, that's its biggest flaw. Um, but everything else before that, I think, is, is kind of great. So what is it, Mike? What is it, Mike? What is uh, it? Well. You're going to choose Man Killers just to fuck with us, no, are no, 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 no. is 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 out of the picture for me. Yeah, you did not care. You, you repeated many times during the screening, this is very bad. Yeah, no, it, <laughs> and, it, and, it, to the, and you were kind of rocking back and forth and looking at the floor. And like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's bad, it's uncomfortable, it's frustrating. It's like, why did they make all these decisions? It's bad, everything, even the production design. Like, they could not afford to rent out a warehouse where bad guy had his lair. Oh, I love it. It's so, it, like, it's someone corrugated said... corrugated aluminum. Someone said, like, like, a community theater production. Yeah. Where it was, like, you have a little, like, poof of smoke that goes off. And then, like, a platform falls over. And then out. a platform falls over. Yeah, and it was, like, that level of production, but in a film. I, I, I'm going to pick Rocktober Blood. You think it's a better fit for Best of the Worst? Uh, I didn't laugh at the pit. I, I, I laughed occasionally. But for any reason. Yeah, the Most reason being, the reason, reason being, Ferd and Beverly, as an elderly pe couple that found Christ, that sold their film for 50 bucks yeah. to finance a barbecue restaurant. Plus, plus shipping. Plus, <laughs> that's it. This is great. I would love to throw man killers in a pit. Perhaps. Somewhere, somewhere, perhaps in Wisconsin. Perhaps, oh, like, like Beaver Dam. Perhaps. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If we could find where the pit was. Yeah. In in Beaver Dam, maybe we could throw man killers into it. Like go on a field trip to actually find the location, and, if and go on like a little tour, a little pit tour. A pit, a pit, a pit, pit stop. A pit stop, if you will. <laughs> Thank you.
Well, Mike, here we are in Beaverdam, Wisconsin, where the pit was shot 30 some years ago. That's right, Jay, and we brought man killers with us today. So hopefully, if we can find the actual pit, I'm throwing man killers down into it. And maybe, just maybe, there might be some angry troglodytes in the bottom of that pit to tear this terrible movie apart. Well, if we're gonna find the pit, we should probably split up. We can cover more ground that way. Great idea. Call me if you find the pit. All right, bye. Bye. Well, Mike, did you find the pit? No, Jay. Did you find the pit? No. Well, what do we do with man killers then?